Hey everyone, welcome back today. It's a beautiful uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, sun shining outside, and we're gonna be doing um, some work on a MacBook. Who would have guessed, right? And this one, what we're gonna be doing for it is more of a data recovery. And you're like, well, it's a MacBook, right? Well, um, why are you gonna be data doing a data recovery on them? Well, because customers are mainly interested in getting the data off, they don't really want to do a repair for this one. Um, they're mainly interested in focusing on getting off um, the music files they created. I believe they're Logic Pro X files. That's what they did. And it's great to see an Apple user use Apple software for Apple things, right? So we got this in. This is the 2020 A2179. That is the non-M1 version of the MacBook Air. The A2337 is. That's the same one that came out the same year, right? It's a, it's, it is still a 2020 MacBook Air but um, it has M1 chip in it. Those ones are a little bit more like foams. They're a little bit more difficult to work with because they have security built right in and everything is more integrated than it already is. Now, you see this, there is no um, external SSD or detachable SSD. Everything is integrated on this one. Um, on this Model 2, um, I believe from the 2018 on, if I'm not mistaken, that one started to come with a T2 security chip and um, it makes it a lot more difficult for repairs in general and um, even for data recoveries, it does make it more difficult because uh, sometimes it can cor get corrupted, sometimes you have to reflash it. Um, sometimes when you do a repair, everything looks good and you still have a problem with that T2. So we have a dedicated video actually talking about that. If you guys are interested, in it, it's a DFU mode um, after you do a repair or if we see certain symptoms that we do that, everything voltages look good, but we're still seeing a problem with that. Um, and it's kind of the same instance when we do uh, like uh, data recoveries for them is because of that, right? There's a T2 security tip. So anytime you usually work on them, there could be a problem we may need to reflash it. So if that's the case, then just do a data recovery for it. So, and especially if they're just mainly interested in getting uh, the stuff off. So for the M1 versions, it's a little bit different. We talked about another video. I'm not gonna go through that. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, more intensive uh, to work on them because they're more like a phone, uh, more like a tablet, um, sim very similar um, layout, um, architecture, everything is, well, it's the same chip for the most part that's in the tablet is in there in, in the phone as well. But um, you obviously have a keyboard, you have more power, but that's for another video. This one, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. So we plug it in, all right, let's see what we're getting. We don't see any obvious damage here, but I believe there was a liquid spill, if I'm not mistaken. So we took out the battery connection just to see what's going on. And so let's see. Oh, so it feels like something's jammed, actually. There, I'm not gonna go crazy. Uh, that one still feels like it's a little bit jammed, even though it showed five volts. But then you get five volts, 0.01 amps. And we're gonna go over here too. This one feels a little bit jammed, like something's in there. See that? Yeah, I think something's a little bit, it doesn't go in all the way there. Okay, so we just removed the, the port there. And we see it looks like maybe a little bit of uh, just like white crust on it there. It doesn't look to be terribly bad, but it looks like maybe some type of uh, nastiness, especially on this side, it's probably a little bit easier to see. A little bit of nastiness there, but these are removable. Um, they're usually not the thing that fails. Uh, if you plug it in, you see in the voltage there, there's nothing at all. Nothing will come up on the port. Usually that means there's a problem here. Anything else usually means there's a circuit issue, right? There's a bigger problem than it should be. So what we need to do is, I would just want to pop that real quick just to double check it, but let's go ahead and just remove uh, the rest of the board there, and then we'll go from there. Okay, we lift it up. We'll take a look at it. Doesn't look to be anything crazy obvious, except we do see right over here on one of the NANs, we do see right over here a little bit of a drip there or something on one of the NANs. Maybe if we go under a microscope, we'll be able to go ahead and take a look and see what's going on there. But it looks to be cl pretty clean for the most part. Well, if you look over here, we actually see on the side IO, um, there, there looks to be most likely a liquid spill. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually look at this underneath there. Um, otherwise, it should actually be coming on the side. So let's go ahead and take this up. Okay, so we did take it up, and now what we want to do is go under the microscope and take a look at it further. So if we take a look underneath, we see that there is damage to the main connection there, as well as where like the audio, close to where the audio is. And there's our Touch ID connector with our power button. If we flip it over, we actually see it. Do we see the damage? So when we see here, the um, it looks like the liquid damage even damaged the traces on them. So for something like this, doing a repair anyway, looks like what we probably want to do just do a replacement because this is a detachable one, right? And that, that makes it easy for easy replacement. We can just do that. Um, otherwise, if we had to, um, if this was part of the board, we would have to remove this connector and um, pretty much do a replacement for it, which would be a lot more work. 
on it. So let's go ahead and just get a replacement one and then we'll compare them and uh, we should plug it in and it should work. So we also move over to the port and we can see the port's a little bit dirty. It's not crazy damaged. Um, the number one thing when you see for ports is that if this gets damaged, right? So for ports, this is usually the part that gets damaged. So these are the trace lines. And now these are power and data lines. So a lot of times they can interfere and it causes a bigger short to the main circuit if they get damaged or ripped. Since this one really isn't too bad right here, we can even move some of the crust there and it doesn't look to actually be too bad. We can easily do that. Doesn't seem to be a problem. If it was really bad, if there was like, you have like a straight black line, then you have a problem. Uh, or if you have something even like this, this has a lot of wear and tear on it. Let's see if we can actually move this to the side. Because you'll see they'll actually have a little bit of a different shine. And they have a different shine because this is a lot of wear and tear um, on it. You see that? The shine on the tips, on the edges, like here. That's because this is a lot of wear. So probably when you insert the, um, the USB-C charger, you can put a lot of wear on it. But it looks to be, OK, this one's starting to lift a little bit. So we probably want to get a replacement if you're doing mainly um, a total repair on it. Because what that's going to do is you're going to, uh, you don't want this to get worse. Because otherwise, you could just do a resolder for for each one of them. You can do that, but again, this is another replacement one, so some, sometimes it's just better just to go along and just do that there. So we could do a replacement on this one, and then we'll go replace it on the other one. And that should be good. And now, if we actually look at the other side of the cable, oh, there we go. If we look at the other side, we actually see this little bit of burn and damage there too. So that makes sense. So this is the side that connects to the I/O board with uh, the Touch ID and everything else there. So you can see corrosion and stuff. This is another one we could just do a replacement for as well. Won't give a problem after that. Right, so we replaced this because um, this, this was our problem. And we also did swap out um, our USB-C connection because we're worried about, especially when you're um, doing any, anything with power and data, we want to make sure that's swapped out too, there too. So we swapped those out. Um, now we're just going to go ahead and uh, take a look at it. Uh, we inspected the board, didn't see anything else really with the board because the board actually looks to be pretty good on there. So we didn't see any extra liquid damage, we mainly hit the side I.O. And um, that was the main instance. But that's obviously because it's causing a short there. So now let's go ahead and test it out. Let's plug it in. Let's see what we're getting now. See if it turns on. Uh, do we have the battery plug? Yes, we do. So we're good. We should have it just enough really to get it up. So if we plug it in there, we're getting our 20 volts, which is good. We were getting five before. And we should get power on. Turn off this light. A nasty screen. We'll probably clean that there too. Take a little bit of time. No fan spin yet. It's getting about. The amps are kicking up a little bit. Uh, let's see if it turns on when it should, because it really wasn't something else. But it's going to take a little bit of time, especially after uh, unplugging battery and stuff. Oh, I pressed the power button there. <laughs> so I guess that's good. Now, yeah, okay, <laughs> as you press the power button that time. Usually it turns on by itself there. Uh, we see an Apple logo and amps are going crazy, like almost two amps there. So we'll recover data, put on an external drive, and we should be good. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on doing a data recovery on the A2179 2020 Intel-based MacBook Air. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We got data recoveries. We got liquid spill repairs. Some that are a little bit more complicated than, than others on them, but no, nevertheless, a repair, data recovery successful. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are interested, we take walk-ins. We're right outside the local area of Washington, D.C. Uh, we do MacBook repairs, data recoveries, and if you guys are also out of state, we have all of our contact information in the description down below. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Enjoy um, the rest of the afternoon, night, morning, wherever you're going to be at, and have a great one. Bye.